so I ended up maybe do, maybe doing five trips or so, and I don't have to go through all of them at all. But uh, the next one was uh, it towards towards uh, like south, you know, in Helmand of Afghanistan, and so we uh, we we went out there doing and that was about right at the time of like the Marja offensive that the Marines were doing. So that was when the when they were doing that and like Lash God and. Uh, and, and Marja offensive. So, and it was getting pretty nasty around there. You know, they were at, they had a bunch of, uh, you know, triple a and stuff that they were pulling out and shooting at the Cobras and, you know, the Marines were having quite a time with it down there and it was, it was pretty dynamic. So, you know, we were really just kind of tasked uh, to, to flow around there and do some harassing stuff and look for some of the triple a stuff and, you know, God forbid anything that was a little bit more powerful that they were really scared of, you know, for the, for the helos and stuff to just yeah. enable their freedom of movement. Um, you know, m- minimally dynamic, I would imagine nothing. Uh, it wasn't anything where we were in serious, uh, but, but it gave me that taste of Afghanistan and the differences, you know, a lot of ha- you know, a lot of halves helicoptering in stuff, which I didn't get a ton of exposure with. Hey. on uh, on the on the you know first one in, in iraq so uh so that was good just kind of building it building it up to you know whatever it is that would you know come at us the, the, the next time but uh not super eventful great group of guys that was my first exposure with the first, with the platoon that i would basically stay with the whole time uh from here on out so i kind of switched over between that iz to to uh afghanistan one and then kind of stayed with that platoon the whole rest of the time. And, uh, you know, best, best go- group of guys I've ever met. So, uh, yeah. So after that one, um, that's that. And so we got back from that trip and it was only about a month or so that we had home. And then they did, a, you know, they did a kind of a call you back, uh, just to, it turns out that they had made a decision in, uh, I think this this is around when sort of the like Petraeus was sort of getting into that position and taking over uh, around that time. And so they made like a decision that they wanted, you know, they they had some study or whatever. And it was basically like we don't have freedom of movement for just our standard battle space owners, you know, um, uh, around. And, And we can draw a heat map of where we can't even get in and walk and. And so they, they came up with this idea that, well, we'll just send Rangers right into this hottest heat spot to just <laughs> get them in there and just try to kill everybody in there and, uh, and give, give the battle space owners some freedom of, of maneuver, you know, so they can at least drive through some of these towns. Cause it, you know, they were, they were straight no go zones and right. that's not really stuff you see on the news and stuff, you know, like who would have ever think like, Oh, the Marines just don't go there. Cause it's, one, it's not strategically worth it, and two, they're going to lose three or four guys to IEDs. And I mean, this is the IED threat that I've never even experienced before. It was so you know right. absurd uh, at this point down there south. And so, uh, so we went and we did this, and you know, uh, basically they just put a couple of teams, you know, a couple of Ranger platoons together, and uh, we went, and uh, it was kind of an undetermined amount because we were obviously going out prior to, uh, you know, prior to the, uh, to the actual window in which we were supposed to leave Mm -hmm. and, uh, just said, you know, you'll guys, you guys are going to fall in on this, you know, mission and then probably go out through the duration of what our normal one would be. And then we'll, you know, all redeploy at the same time. And so, yeah. And so it was just, uh, you know, so that turned into about six and a half months of a, of a rotation, which, uh, you know, when you're going pretty hard, yeah, that's a long deployment. There's a oh, reason those sure. deployments are, you know, like it's like when you're just going. But it was totally different in the way that we weren't sitting there going to hit targets and hit them and hit them and hit them every day or every other day. This was a very deliberate thing. So we would, you know, we would kind of and we got the opportunity to go over. I mean, we were in every region of Afghanistan throughout that time from wow. from far north to far west, east to the south down and then the helmet all the way out to now you know, like on the border basically. And so it was just basically, you know, kind of at the, at the general's spot, you know, these guys would sort of confer and they'd say, where do we, where do we think that we have a huge, you know, enemy population and, and no freedom of movement. 
and and we would plan for a couple of days you know usually plan for a week or week or so plus for these and and we'd it wasn't like let's just go in there half cocked and you know but so we'd go in there with a couple of platoons and um basically dig in all night and make you know gun ports and mortar firing pits and put up an american flag in the center of this like taliban heartland and yeah. uh you know the, and then it's kind of like poking comes. them and seeing what happens it's saying it. hey we're it's here and it. yeah <laughs> that was it you know and so we'd have a couple of guys that were you know they'd go out and hit a couple you know a couple of nais just to stir up the pot a little bit and get the radios going on the on the on their side and let them know we were there and then and then you know we're just loaded for bear so we you know we got two full platoons and you got all the attachments and of course like you know we got airplanes stacked up for for days into the you know in the end of the atmosphere you know right and uh and so then you kind of play the cat and mouse game and you could see when they would be bold and and when they would come out but but you know starting at the beginning of doing that because you knew you were going into it at that point you knew that you were going to get in a gunfight you know pretty considerable and and you had to like kind of keep the initiative from the beginning because sure. a couple of times we sort of lost the momentum as I kind of, you know, see it. And, and if you start to lose that, you know, things can spiral quickly. So if you keep the screws on them immediately, you know, overpoweringly, they would generally, they would generally fight, but it wouldn't be where you're in, you know, you feel like you're out of control of, right. of the situation, you know, and yeah. that happened a couple of times for sure. Cause just, you know, things happen, but, um, you know, the first time I really actually got to sort of use the, you know, use little birds and actually use fires to do my job was really in that, you know, person to person or, or as far as, you know, on the ground controlling. And uh, so it just sort of happened so quickly because, you know, we, we sort of were expecting that this was going to get bad. You know, it was so bad that the, you know, it was part of the fighting season. So all of these, all these dudes, they would just live in the trenches, the Taliban guys, they lived in the hedgerows and, yeah. and so they'd have like a little base camp but they'd come in and that they had like little camps deep in these hedgerows and i mean you could just kind of go through and and see it and you know they try to soften it up but i mean it was so many people in these areas that they had just flushed in to kind of control this town that yeah. uh that they were just living in the hedgerows you know yeah. and they were they're were pretty loaded up ready to go and so <laughs> so you know probably one of my favorite things about you know just being able to to work with the with the 160th guys was you know we were just given authorization that uh when we were coming in they were just full guns weapons free so they when we would say you know get a minute out they would the mini guns would start and they would not stop until they took off and flushed away into the head because wow. it was just that many so they just did it as a deterrent like sure don't even mess around you know but it was it, you know, it's like, and then you don't, you don't get that often. Like even no. when you're doing other, you're like, that's a, I, I remember thinking to myself, like, that's a once in a lifetime thing. And we have yeah. this TTT where they're like, we're not going to risk it. And so they would just go, you know, both guns on either side as hard as they could go. And, uh, for, for two solid minutes until you know, we get in and get, and they'd get out with us. And you just remember seeing them, you know, flush and just blazing. And, and they were, you know, they would take a lot of fire uh, as well. So it was yeah. for good reason. For they, sure. Oh, yeah. They were getting lit up pretty well. So, yeah. so yeah, we, you know, we got there and uh, landed. And all of a sudden, you know, I look up and we've done a fire mission, you know. And I, it, you know, thank God I had some of the greatest pilots in the world because it was like, hey, man, I got some. I know exactly where you guys are. I got some definite bad guys right here. And they're coming over here. They got, you know, I could see their see the Russian made guns and stuff. And I'm like, yeah, let's do it. You know, it gave him clearance. And he's like, you know, three seconds later, burp, you know, gone. And I'm like, wow, that was, uh, it wasn't as hard as I thought it would be, you know? So, and it's yeah. just, it sort of flies by, flies by on you sure. a little bit. And you're like, well, now we're, now we're in it. And we've, we've kicked the dust off and popped the cherry a little bit here and we're ready to go, you know? So, yeah. so then, uh, you know, those, those events started to really uh unfold and we got better at it and also we got to places that got that were really good and 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 we're going to defend that that space and it would irritate the hell out of them that we would 
we would put uh, American flag up in their territory. Sure. So, um, <laughs> you know, we had a lot of, ser- you know, pretty serious events, but, uh, you know, there was, uh, there was one, our, our EOD guy, uh, who's now, who's now a congressman now, uh, good dude, Brian Mass, but he was with us and, uh, he was leading out with one of our recce guys and, uh, just a very odd situation. So, you know, we landed and they had basically gone over, uh, gone over a little wall and then came back over. He actually had been over. And I think, I think the, the recce guy had been over as well. And he actually stepped back over it and hit a pressure plate. And, uh, oh, you know, man. I was probably, probably 50 yards away. And, uh, you know, he, he lost his legs in that event. Um, but, uh, you know, I, th- I don't want to speak for him, but I think in a lot of ways it was very obviously a formative event for him. But uh, you know that being being in that situation where you're trying to you know get this guy off that was most catastrophic injury that I had ever you know seen visibly, yeah. and so you're trying to get him buttoned up, and and luckily we we sort of knew that this was a very high threat area, so the birds had stayed. Uh, they didn't flush and go back to base. They literally stayed for the first 10 or 20 minutes, very, very close in case this exact thing happened. And, uh, so we were able to call them right back and, uh, and, you know, get them on in a matter of minutes, which, uh, you know, but, uh, you know, Not speaks good. to the character of him and how that guy's, uh, the resiliency that, to to get well and, and do all of these things and then go on to, you know, serve and serve in Congress. Is, oh, is for sure. Impressive. But, you know, being there with him and talking about that story, uh, now, you know, it, being able to kind of go back and remember what I remembered and, and, you know, uh, trying to gather up all the pieces of him, and, you know, and get them back in one place, you know, and him still, oh you know, trying to stay in the fight was, uh, was incredible, you know, it's yeah. incredible, incredible resiliency to, to get back from that. So, uh, you know, that was a very serious time in that, uh, leading up, that was probably the most significant thing. And we had a couple guys that had uh, stepped on some, you know, small little foot mine stuff and not to, you know, down, not, not to downgrade, but that was a catastrophic event, but we had had a couple guys shot up to that point And, uh, yeah. you know, one guy had lost his foot, but it was, you know, it, the, the environment was just so ridiculous with, yeah. with the IED, the IED threat was just crazy. So, you know, we'd get to where we'd just land and, shoot these you know these little mini micklick things these little teeny backpack things with a rocket they were just the small like apob little things right. and that would shoot the little rocket with a deck cord and that'd give us 50 yards to walk you know and, and then we'd <laughs> right. put another one down and we'd do it again and you're like this is stupid you know like what are we doing here yeah and uh so you know kind of got through that situation but you know a couple couple of good uh good solid firefights come out of that deployment for sure with uh you know with doing that mission and and with those dudes because it would just you know you'd go for all you go all day basically so you just uh you'd land and they'd start in the morning and they'd start kind of harassing and and uh you know a couple we just certainly would go all day and all day and uh you know we had a we had a 175 uh mortar team and, uh, well, it was, it was, the team was really 275, but we had a couple of, of leaders, uh, you know, Lance Vogler was with us when he, uh, when he was, was hit in that, uh, that deployment. So he was a 175 guy that was, that was attached to us as a, uh, as a mortar, you know, platoon leader mm-hmm. and, uh, as a mortar team leader, excuse me. And so he, he basically, uh, we kind of started getting into it and, and this guy, you know, we were, we were taking these rounds that were, that were, you know, Russian grenades and, and this, somebody was just hiding really well and we just couldn't find them. And the guy just dialed us right in, in the compound, you know, so yeah. you can only hide 70 guys in a, in a even if <laughs> right. it's a big compound, like there's dudes in the compounds that are just kind of, st- you know, in the corners or man and gun ports and stuff. And, and this dude, this, you know, this dude had us dialed in, you know, with these. And so they just started, started laying them in and uh and you know it was again you know it goes back but i was sitting there just right there in the courtyard right where you know they landed and i just kept thinking like it's really quiet you know and i just kept getting this feeling of like get up you know you you need to get up and get move away from this this open space 
and I mean five five seconds after kind of getting through there, you know, we took a we took a pretty direct hit, you know. So we took about three three fully, you know, in the compound with with people all around hits, and then you know we started try and respond just by dropping as you know as much as we could uh, to get them to stop. But in this time, you know, Lance had taken his team out and and gotten into the mortar pit to respond, get some immediate suppression fire. Problem is, this you know this guy was pretty dug in, didn't know where this was coming from. Sure, but he had us dialed in for sure. So they're going out to just do a, you know, and so I just remember him getting out there and leading this team out there and and you know sitting there in the wide open and. Uh, you know, another one hit that was just, you know, dead, dead honest, basically. And uh, that hurt. I think that ended up wounding maybe maybe 18 or 20 guys with that one thing because it was yeah. so, you know, and uh, and obviously Lance took took a fatal shot on that one. And, uh, you know, despite everybody trying their best to, to get him. But, uh, you know, it just speaks to just speaks to the leadership, you know, he's just yeah. doing a, what he perceives as an ordinary thing, but like, you know, so, uh, yeah, he's always, always an interesting, uh, story. And, and he was, he was on 16 or 17th deployment, you know, I'm like, just, you know, this, you just, you know, it's like you go back and interview somebody. That's the guy you interview. Like that's yeah. un, unheard of and, you know, pretty amazing. So it just speaks to Ranger. I mean, that's, that's what they do. I mean, they don't, they don't, they disregard their own safety to do the mission. And it's like, it's very commendable. You know, it's just, it, that's the kind of caliber of guys you were working with at the time, you know, just awesome. It's guys. unreal. Yeah. It's just unreal. And there's, I mean, I, I, you know, you feel like, you feel like a wimp half the time because, <laughs> you know, you're like, you know, it's things start kicking off and they're like, well, you, you know, and it's just, it's just their instinct. And it's yeah. just, it really is. And you think like, I don't want to go out there right now, you know, <laughs> right. like, and you know, this is not good. Right, right. This is really bad situation. And I don't want to go walk over there. Or I don't want to, you know, this or that. And your body's telling your mind's telling, you know, in the, in these guys just let their courage take over. Yeah. And, uh, it's, it's unbelievable, you know, to, to watch them operate. And it, it shows you, you know, what, what real courage is, 